Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today, I'm unboxing a Jinhao X450 that I was gifted by my wife during the ink event period. Here we've got the box. Let's take it out. So, come out of the box and we reveal this very attractive looking pen. Let me just fetch my pen rest and I can pop that on there whilst I put those in the bin. I like to keep my desk clear when I'm trying to record. So here we've got a Jinhao X450. Now I do have some other X450s, but what my wife's done is got me this one. And just look at this pattern. It's like, is it maybe lightning or flames? I think more like lightning or electricity sparking away. And it's this really nice, it's got a black background. And I would say, is that like a yellowy orange? Quite bright. Very different, isn't it? Quite unusual looking. So the top of the pen, we've just got this black dermed plastic. That comes down, we've got the gold coloured ring there. And here we've got the clip. What have we got on the clip? It's like three dots. What's the clip like? Very stiff. Can't even get to move doesn't bother me I very rarely use clips but it's something I will need to loosen it a bit for when I use it in my gale and leather folio so it goes over the material the cap so underneath that ring we've got a little bit there of a tip out and then we go straight really do like this pattern at the bottom of the cap we've got this gold colored band there we've got Jin Hao we go around, I've got X450 on the back. So at least we know what the model is. There's a tiny drop off from that cap band down to the body. Then the body seems to be about halfway down the same width. Then we start tapering ever so slightly. I mean, it is a very, very gentle taper. And if it wasn't for the fact I was looking for it, I don't really think I'd see it. And we go down, we've got another gold coloured band, then another black plastic end cap there. Let's take the cap off. Now, I've had to film this a couple of times. This is a very stiff cap. I'm having to put a lot of pressure off to pull that. It really is there stiff. Hopefully, as I use this, it'll get a bit easier. We do have, by the look of it, a plastic liner in there. If we look at the nib, I like the way Jin Hao do their nibs. I like these two-tone nibs. So it's predominantly a gold colour, but then we've got this nice decorative silver-coloured border. We've then got the Jin Hao logo under there. Always makes me laugh. We've got 18 kgp. I don't think it is, but, you know, if they want to put that, that's fine. Got to take that with a pinch of salt that it is. The nib comes into the section. The section, nice and comfortable, nice wide section. It's shaped, so you can see here we've got like a finger guide. I don't like that. I'm being very picky here because I don't hold my pens there. If you hold your pens up in the middle of the section, perfect. I tend to hold my pens down near the bottom of the section feels odd because you can feel that starting to go down and it feels like your fingers are in the wrong place but it's a very personal thing so unscrew the body it looks like we've got plastic fittings but then we've got metal there so not really something you could think about eyedropper in and then inside we've got that Jin Hao converter so just pop the pen back together Pop the cap on. Again, very stiff to pop that cap on. It'll ease with time, but at the moment, I've just got to be aware of that and make sure it's not actually over me when I'm taking it off in case ink decides to fly out with the pressure I'm putting on it. Let's swap over and we'll do some size comparisons. Here we've got my standard size comparison pens, the Pilot Metropolitan and the Lamy Safari. So looking at the three of those, the Jin Hao, just the teeniest little bit longer, but not by much. Let's take the caps off and look at them unposted. I've lined the pens up 
so the tips of the nibs are all in a line. If we look at it in this way, the Lamis Fari, obviously the bigger of the three, but the Metropolitan and the Jinho, very similar in terms of size. But if I move the Jinho, so now the bottoms of the sections are all lined up, the Jinho now definitely smaller than the Metropolitan. The nib on the Jinho is number six size, so it's a bigger nib. Got number five size pilot nib on the Metropolitan. Then we've got that standard Lamy Safari nib there on the Safari. I'm going to try posting these. I've posted all three pens. Not going to talk about this because the Jinho doesn't actually post. Yes, that cap will go on the end. And if you push it a bit, you get a little bit of a grip, but it comes off so easy. So not really a pen to post. And if you do, just be aware that cap is going to wobble around a lot. I'm going to step away from the desk, I'm going to wash out the pen. When I come back, we'll fill it with ink, do a writing sample, then I'll give you my first impressions. The pen's had a clean, it's time to fill it with ink. Let's move these out of the way. So the ink I've decided to use today, I was thinking, well, what have I got that goes well with these oranges? I've got a number of orange inks, but the one that I decided to go for is actually named a red ink, and it's Pelican 4001 Brilliant Red. Now, why I've decided to go for this, in my swatches, and to be honest, the other pens I've had this in, it's looked more of an orange than a red with like a gold sheen to it. So I thought, let's give it a try in this pen and let's see how well it matches. And if it doesn't match, that's not a problem. It's easy enough to change the ink, isn't it? So let's fill it up. And you see there, already, it's looking orange rather than red. Let's pop in the nib and then fetch up the ink. Let's do that again. We only got about half a converter full there. Oh, look at that. Virtually a full converter. But just clean off the nib, get the ink out of the way. Then we can do a writing sample. Here we've got the notebook of testing, Oxford Optic Paper A5 notebook. Let's write with this pen. So we've got here a Jinho X450. Can you see what I mean about the ink? It looks orange to me. It's got a medium nib on it. My wife paid a whopping $5 for this as an ink vent gift for me. The ink... Pelican, 4001, brilliant red. Drying times, so here's the media, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, one minute. After a minute, teeny bit of smudging, but that's nice and dry. I'm going to move the mic down to the page so you can hear the pen right. There's a tiny amount of feedback coming through the nib. The nib itself, when I'm writing, feels very, very smooth. It's a bit like using uh, my Apple Pencil on an iPad. That's how smooth it feels. There's also a bit of stiffness there to the nib. So you can get that little bit of tactileness, but there's not a lot there. One of the things I may look at doing with this nib is actually doing a little bit of work on it to actually introduce a bit of roughness to it because I do enjoy that tactile nature but if you like a smooth nib this is certainly there for you let's look for any line variation as I said the nib felt stiff so here's no pressure Gonna add some pressure so yeah we are getting a wider line definitely putting down a lot more ink there's no pressure there's one with pressure none with none 
and win. So where we've got the pressure, we are seeing a wider line. What's the flow keep up like? Very nice, no problems. Goes the full length of the page really easily. So what are my first thoughts of this Jinhao X450? It's nice, it's a really nice experience to write with. One thing I'm going to comment here, on the body, you can see there the line where this pattern has been put on and joined together and it doesn't quite meet. You know, I'm being very picky. You can see the same there on the cap doesn't bother me in the slightest I still like the look of it the pen unposted just about fits in my hand it's nice and wide it felt comfortable with my little bit of writing here when I use other x450s for longer sessions they really are nice and comfy so it doesn't bother me as I showed earlier on you can if you put a lot of pressure on it you can get that cap to stay there but with my normal pressure you know there's the cap coming off so not a posting pen i'm not too keen here where we've got this little inset for the fingers i think if you're a student or if you're just getting into fountain pens that might be handy it's the same with the lamy safari i don't like the sections on those either because of the way they're trying to guide your fingers you know i've been using fountain pens since i was at school and i always hold them fairly low down the cap, very stiff. I think that will get better though with use. The ink colour, actually quite like it with this pattern. I say, they call it brilliant red. It's Maybe it's just my eyes. Maybe it is a type of red, but to me it's a very orange red. And I think that orange red of the ink does pick out this colour in the pattern really well. Quite enjoyable. All in all, for $5, I think you're getting a good pen that writes well. If it only lasts you, say, six months, who cares at $5? You can get another one. The other X450s I've got, I've had now nearly two years, so it's not as if they are something which breaks very quickly. I think $5, awesome value for money. So this is my first impressions of this Jinhao X450 in this orange lightning pattern and Pelican 4001 Brilliant Red. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. What are your thoughts of the Jinhao X450? Have you got one? Have you got a number of them? What do you think about them? Have you tried swapping the nibs? I mean, it's a number six size nib. Should be fairly easy to try swapping a nib. That might be something I might try with this one as I go down the road with it. Please drop your comments down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit the thumbs up button every time you like. Every time you comment just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon.